Hey, TikTok, Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. And uh, it is a Monday. The uh, market was down a little bit earlier. Uh, it looks like it may have recovered some ground. But, uh, you know, we're still in a kind of a, in a, um, in a, um, um, it, in, in sort of a, in, in sort of an upward uh, motion, but it, it's still, it's still difficult. So, uh, interesting times. Uh, just to have some, some um, uh, uh, screens to show you here uh, today. And um, before I get to it, just wanted to shout out to everybody uh, on Facebook and Periscope, uh, YouTube. And also, uh, anybody that's coming over from LinkedIn, hopefully, I'll have the capability of streaming live uh, from LinkedIn uh, soon. But uh, currently, um, got not on that. And of course, everybody on TikTok, uh, really appreciate you coming by and uh, taking a look at uh, at my live stream. So, um, basically, just uh, just getting to it here. Um, here's the thing: we have. Uh, you know, we're seeing the market retreat a little bit. Um, it's 90, the NASDAQ is 95.52 when this slide was taken. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's it's the kind of thing where, um, you know, it is definitely, it is definitely moving, it is definitely moving to the downside, but not too much. The market is still in a confirmed uptrend. So uh, it's not time to go short yet. Uh, but it may be uh, it may be in the near future. So definitely get ready to short, but it's not a good time to short right now. The market's in a confirmed uptrend, and the Nasdaq has really uh, moved off a little bit off the ten thousand. Seems to have, you know, it was moving up, 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 and then and then we had a little bit of downward motion last week. So there definitely is some program trading that is seeing a little bit of change here. I just wanted to show you the spider. Uh, as you said, the spider was going up, almost reclaiming its level prior to the downturn that happened in uh, late February, early March. Um, it looks like it, you know, it may be bouncing off of the 40-day moving average. This is the, the red line here that you see. Uh, we're down a bit today, but the if you look at these candles, uh, we moved up, and then and then we're we're moving down a little bit today, but not not. Uh, uh, it sort of is a more of a shock more than anything else. Um, I believe that uh, we seem to be seeing some resistance, seeing see, see the floor on the spider at about 300. That seems to be where it wants to be. Um, again, the uh, four-day moving average is moving up, so that's good. And um, you know, we're still in a bull market, which is amazing, uh, even though uh, we may be seeing some headwinds here pretty quick, but. Uh, at least for right now, it's not a good time to be short. You want to be long in the market uh, because of the uh, the way this is trading. Again, the spider, which is the S&P 500, the symbol is SPY, is the largest ETF in the world, and it covers basically all of the companies that are listed on the S&P 500, the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and so this is a very good indicator of where the market sentiment is, at least for the um, S and P 500, which is probably the broadest index. I know most people, you know, talk about the Dow, but the Dow only includes 30 stocks. So, and also, uh, it is it is not the tech-heavy Nasdaq, which is the QQQ. So, this is the one I typically want to analyze as to the overall market. And its uh, its volume is up a little bit today, so we are seeing some some capital move into the market. This shows. That again, there are some. There's some off. There's capital on the on the uh, sidelines that seems to still be moving into the market. So that's actually a very good sign. Um, interestingly enough, though, the market volatility has come up slightly. Um, I don't know if you can see this on the chart, but we moved down from the high in the volatility, which was basically March, uh, which which is in the March time frame. We moved steadily down. And now we tend to be trending up. We're 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 uh, I think we're going to be readjusting here to the 40-day moving average line, as you can see this this red line. So, um, you know, volatility is up, but it seems to be moving 
lower as we speak. This is, um, you know, it's basically a reversal from from Friday. So we seem to be getting some stability in the market, but it's still uh, up from where it was just uh, in early part of June. Um, now on the VIX, this is one of the ones I want to show. Uh, I wanted to show the I want to show the VIX because this indi indicates uh, the, the what the T VIX is. This is a ETF which tracks notes um, basically that uh, that move in sympathy with the VIX. It's it's a two time it's a, it's a two time gearing on this particular. Uh, ETF. It is up significantly today, 3.8%. Uh, that's that that corresponds very well with the volatility as it moves up. It's up also 277%. This is not really a, an investment grade uh, ETF. This is basically used for hedging uh, the TVIX. Um, so uh, it it you you can you can you can make some very very good money in this, but you have to be very careful. It is essentially a um, it's essentially a hot potato. By the way, for everybody on uh, TikTok, I'm simulcasting this on Periscope at pscp.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor and also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Dallas Trading Floor. Um, I just wanted to get into really quickly here some of the stocks that the, um, that the funds are buying. And uh, they're kind of the usual suspects. Norval Nordisks being at the top of the list. They're a big maker of insulin. Uh, Ever, um, Everquote, uh, San, uh, Sanofi, uh, SolarWinds. And one I want to kind of concentrate on, and this is one that I have been sort of highlighting for the last week or so. Seems like there's a lot of activity on it. It's Zynex, and it's a, it, is a, it is a biotech stock. And I'm going to show you the chart on that just in a second. Also, uh, we have another very interesting biotech here uh, as well. It's GMAB. GMAB is a symbol. It is a Danish company that develops antibody therapeutics for the treatment of cancer. And, they, and there is a tremendous number of funds that are buying this particular stock. It's currently trading at $30.95 up uh, significantly. Uh, one dollar, which which is quite a bit, uh, three point six five percent on the price increase on this. Also, the volume is is strong, and the volume uh, change is strong, and that's a really important thing. It also has a composite rating of ninety nine, which is the very best. This stock symbol is G M A B. Uh, it is again a Danish based company that develops antibiotic therapeutics for. The treatment of cancer and other diseases. This is an interesting area to be in. The medical, uh, uh, you know, the medical area and the biotech area, typically fairly hard to invest in. But this is one that a lot of the funds are buying right now. So there's a fairly good chance this will move higher. Um, also, this is one I've been highlighting. I really like this one, Zynex Z Y N E X symbol Z Y X I. And what this stock is, is they produce uh, electrotherapy for pain management uh, and it's a, it, and for spinal cord injuries. Uh, spinal cord injuries are a very, uh, very profitable area for many of companies because it is such a chronic problem. And so uh, there's a lot of, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, upside in this one. Uh, volume is up very nicely, one, uh, 130%. Again, this is being, this is being, acquired by many of the larger funds that are in the biotech and the medical area. So something you definitely want to look at. Um, all right, just, uh, just to kind of give you an update of where I'm at uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and um, Twitch. I'm just starting to, to broadcast on Twitch. Hopefully, I will be broadcasting on Roku. Uh, we're working on that right now, but currently we're not there yet. So uh, that kind of gives you, kind of gives you an idea of where we're at currently um, right now. So let me switch back here, and there we go. All right, um, I'm going to switch over to the to the charts there and back here. Good. All right. Um, let's see. Do I have a question. Okay, I have a question. From, let's see, move it over there. 
And I have a question. All right. Um, what is the 52 week high of what? <laughs> of what? Um, the 52 week, week high, um, typically, it, that's, you know, that's definitely when you want to possibly look at buying a stock is when it's making a new high. I know this sounds very counterintuitive because, you know, we all like bargains, but, um, you know, when a stock is hitting its high, that's really when you want to be in the stock. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> On the last talk, you have spinal. So, okay, absolutely. Let me show you this really, really quickly here. I'm going to go back to the live chart on this. So let me pull that up and I will give you that as we speak. ZNXI. Let's see. Um, ZYXI. I'm sorry. ZYXI. All right. So let's. Hold on. Yeah, we should be, yeah, there we go. All right. So let me pull it over to that um, that chart right now. All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, basically, the the uh, the all time high is around twenty five, as you can as you can see. Uh, let me show you the weekly chart on this one so we can get a good idea. It's it's moving up. Um, I believe the high on this one, let's just take a quick look and see. Yeah, the high on this one is 25. That is the that is the 52-week high. Uh, 25.39 is the high for this sock. So uh, just, just to answer your question, uh, the uh, it is twenty nine uh, it's twenty five thirty five that that is definitely one that you want to take a look at it's very very strongly being accumulated uh, by the funds and I do believe I, I do see it moving higher and I think that uh, you might be able to make some good uh, good increase on that uh, typically when you buy a stock like this try to buy it at or near the at or near the high on the best chart pattern this does have a very good chart pattern. Uh, and then if it, it if it moves up more than 20%, that's when you want to start taking the chips off the table, typically. So, um, but I do think that uh, you know we're, we're going to see some good motion on that as well. So let's see. We have a question on TVIX. Do you know the buy range for the TVIX? No, the TVIX is a little bit tricky. Thanks for thanks for uh, um, you know thanks for thanks for that uh, information. I wouldn't. The TVIX is really, really hard to buy. I, I just, you know, here's the thing on the TVIX. If, if you see that the market is moving up, if, if the, if the volatility is moving up, you want to be, you want to go into the TVIX, but you want to work it very, very carefully. This is more of a day trading instrument. So let me go back. I think I can show you the volatility chart, and that's really when you want to look to buy the TVIX. So let me go back and show you that volatility chart really quickly here. Yeah, there we go. And let's see if we can show you that view on that. Um, here we go. Now, I am showing this, by the way, uh, for everybody on TikTok, I'm showing this simultaneously on uh, YouTube and on Periscope, pscp.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. So here's the thing. This is, unfortunately, this is a little bit tough to look at. Let's look at the weekly chart on this one. Oops. I went back to the wrong to the wrong slide there, um, but uh, let's see if I can give you information on that TVIX. Uh, there we go. There's the TVIX. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see on this chart. It is moving a little bit above the 40-day moving average, and therefore I think that you know we're looking at you know pretty strong motion on this. I I wouldn't be in this more. You know I wouldn't be this more. I would be up this maybe to 185, and then I would then I would get out of this. This is a really not a tr this is really a trading stock for a day trader. So that's kind of really what I wanted to be very clear about the TVX. But you can make very very good money on it. So um, okay, and uh, I have a question on from um, Periscope. Thanks for looking at me on Periscope. What are you feeling about McDonald's? 
Well, typically I don't like the restaurant stocks, to be honest with you, but uh, McDonald's is kind of not really a restaurant stock. Now, let me qualify that by saying with McDonald's, it really is a real estate stock. Um, and that, that too is a kind of a, kind of a troubled area right now, but I do like it. Um, here's the thing about McDonald's. Let me show you the chart on this one really, really quick um, for everybody looking at online on Periscope or YouTube. Let me see if I can give you a good view on that chart. I'm going to blow it up a bit here. Here we go. Okay, so hopefully we'll see this. There we go. Okay, so we'll see it a little bit more. Here's what, here, here's by looking at the chart, um, I'm looking at a stock that is basically seeing a trading range developing here. Here's what's happening. As you can see, we've moved up very much from the low about March 23rd here. Uh, and we, we, we were basically hugging the 40-day moving average, as you can see. But then about last, you know, about 10 days ago, it started to move, move higher. It's moved up to the 200-day moving average, and it's seeing resistance at the 200-day moving average, moving down to the 40-day moving average. My guess on this one is uh, you're going to see this being bouncing around the 40-day moving average. So I don't think you know you're looking at a whole lot of upside on McDonald's. Just my opinion on this. Um, you'd see just broke 200 back to um, back to 190. Okay, well, so yeah, we're at one 188.29. The, the reason it's breaking this this you know the, this this line this is the, this is the 200 day moving average this this red, this black line what's this is programmatic trading this is what you're seeing you're seeing a lot of the programs acquire and sell this based on what this this uh, line is so I don't believe that there I, I believe that it's going to be basically there's going to be a ceiling until we get a breakout but I think a ceiling is going to be about 190, just exactly where you said. I just broke 200 and then back to 190. What that was, was that was when it moved up like that, the programming trading started to sell. So I don't I don't really see this one, um, you know, I don't see this one moving too much above this this 40-day, this 200-day uh, moving average. That's just my, uh, my take on it. Typically with these larger stocks, especially a stock like, like McDonald's, which um, it, it is held by a lot of programmatic traders, and uh, it tends to move directly in, in sympathy to the 40 day, the 40 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. So, okay, so let's see. I am going to take a look at some people from TikTok. Um, got potato, got potato, okay, in and out. All right. Um, let's see. Hey, thanks, Ben. Um, okay, so. Is AMD posed for uh, uh, is AMD poised for a pop? That was a question from um, that was a question on um, TikTok. So that's Tim McDonaldson twelve uh, on TikTok. Um, okay, here's what I'm seeing on this chart for AMD. Let me show you. Let me let me blow this one up so that everybody that's on Periscope and on um, uh, and on uh, YouTube can see it. Uh, let me see if I can give you a good idea on this. I believe, you know, uh, AMD is a quality stock. So, uh, you know, it has been moving. Basically, it's been staying above the 40-day moving average. I believe it looks as if it's moving in a range of about up to about a 59 range, 59.50 range. And, and thereabouts. So I do believe it's moving. It's going to move up probably not too much higher than 59, but I do believe uh, there's going to be some buying pressure. Here's the thing about the semiconductors. We're in a semiconductor uh, upgrade cycle, and this is um, this is kind of what rules the market. I'm originally from the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and I did work in that industry. So uh, typically you have a about it, it's about an 18 month cycle. We're in the part of the cycle where there is going to be a lot of buying in the manufacturing space. That's why you want to look at TSMC, applied materials, and also the quality 
um, the, the quality chip companies like AMD. I, I think AMD is going to see a very nice uh, bump. But here's the problem with AMD. I've never really been able to make a whole lot of money on AMD, just my opinion. I believe that the next really very large uh, movement is going to be in the RF space for 5G. And there's a great there's a there's a great stock in that area, QRVO, QRVO, and it, uh, it 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 tends to it's 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 going to do quite well. And it's a little bit down today. It's at 10804. Oh wait a minute, it's up. So there you go. Um, but I do believe we're going to see some strength in that particular stock because uh, it it is in this very interesting space. When Apple announces their new iPhone on uh, September 21st and 22nd. That's probably going to be the date. Hasn't been announced yet, but that has been the uh, that has been how uh, in the past um, Apple has has announced typically a new iPhone. And this one is a very significant one because it will change. Uh, it will obsolete uh, a lot of the iPhones out there. So it may start another very, very significant upgrade cycle. And part of this New phone is R, these RF uh, these RF chips which are made by this company Curvo Q R V O and uh, so that's definitely one I definitely want you to take a possibly a, you know possibly look at watch listing that one because I do think it's it, you know it has a lot of potential um, you know for this upgrade cycle so let's see. Um, uh, can you give some uh, can you give some information this is uh, uh, Abosh, I believe. Abosh ready? Yeah, thank you. And uh, it's uh, VOO is the symbol on this stock. So let's take a look at VOO. Let's take a look at the chart. Okay, this is the Vanguard um, S&P 500 ETF. This is very similar to the Spider in the way it, in, in the way it uh, trades. Um, here's the thing. I believe that we're going to see Hopefully it's settle, uh, you know, at about the, uh, at least for this one, I'm looking at it settling at about uh, the 273 level, I believe. Um, very, it's tra this one trades extremely, uh, it, very, very similar to the spider. So let me just show you the spider. The reason I always bring up the spider is because the spider typically is the largest held of them. So let's see if I can get a quote. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the chart, you'll see this downward motion and then up with strong volume. So it's very similar to VOO, which is the Vanguard equivalent, basically, of the spider. The um, Let me show that to you on the screen here. Um, you know, Vanguard, State Street is the one that, that, uh, that, that sponsors the spider. And Vanguard is the one that sponsors the VOO. That's the chart here. As you can see, this motion very, very similar to the Spider. So let's see. And it, it covers exactly the same range of stock, and that's the S&P 500. You can see basically the same kind of chart action on them. So really, they're, they're kind of almost interchangeable with each other. So I uh, just wanted to show you uh, that. All right, so let's see if I can get another question here on. All right, that's kind of my opinion on it. I, I, um, Jim wants a Big Mac. I have had, I've eaten way too many Big Macs in my life. I need to eat lots fewer of those. They are delicious, though. I love them. Um, why do you think Netflix is so good? Well, <laughs> why do I think Netflix is so good? Well, because I think that the tel the the movie business is changing f fundamentally, and have you gone to a ro have you gone to a theater recently? Probably not. As a matter of fact, AMC and Cinemark are doing horribly. People just aren't going out to see movies anymore. But guess what? They are watching movies. There a lot of them though are on Netflix, <laughs> and it's just one of those things. Netflix. If you look at the statistics, in the last three years, has been one of the most consistent of the fangs, even more so than Facebook and, and the other ones. If you and I'm going to bring up the chart on it right now, and this is one of the reasons I'm actually, for for um, sake of full disclosure, I have a position in Netflix um, right now, and I have sold options on on it. 
Um, it's up today. It's up six dollars and seventy-four cents, or one point six one percent. This is uh, just a very good stock, as you can see. It's been moving basically on this trend line, which is the forty-day moving average. It's also number one in this group, and it is got a composite rating of ninety-eight. And as you can see, the relative strength here, it's 89 on the relative strength, making it one of the absolute top stocks. And it's not just it's not just this year. It's not just, you know, it's been this way for almost two and a half years. So this is one, you know, if you could buy this, this is this is definitely one that you want to go and buy because it definitely is a growth stock, but it is becoming a proxy for the entire movie industry because Currently, Netflix is the largest producer now of original content for the movie business. And it's very interesting because it is one of the, in Hollywood, it's one of the few American, the large sources of American funding. A lot of Hollywood's movies are being, uh, are being bankrolled by the Chinese currently. And that's why you've seen some changes in films such as Top Gun which removed the Taiwanese flag from some of the costumes in the film. So um, Netflix is definitely a force when it, in, in, in Hollywood. And because many of the traditional distributors and exhibitors are not doing as well, such as AMC and Cinemark and the other, uh, the other um, theater chains, uh, this is, you know, this has been, you know, Netflix has been one of the big, um, you know, one of the big uh, creators of, of new content. So it is very, very significant, and uh, their revenues are growing as well as their user count. So it's it's basically a very good stock. So I just, uh, you know, okay. Um, let's see. Will Amazon buy AMC? Very good question. You know, you know, I think you know they, you know, Amazon, Amazon has a lot of capital. They most of their businesses are relatively low margin, with the exception of the um, with the exception of Amazon. Um, you know, with with the with the exception of the Amazon Web Services, which is very high margin. This is why Amazon uh, uses Amazon Prime to basically lock in its customers and create a kind of an ecosystem. That, that can sell things to people, but Amazon is looking to move into more of a physical space, and I definitely think that you know uh, AMC might be a very good acquisition. The problem that AMC has is AMC is it has a lot of leases on mall-based uh, theaters, and these leases tend to be very very expensive to the to to a company that basically can't. Uh, can't can't do anything. Can't create any revenue because of the COVID nineteen thing. It's it's just been horrible. I believe that uh, Amazon may buy them, but uh, you know, I suspect they're probably going to wait until they go into bankruptcy before they do. Uh, just my opinion. I think they're going to be able to they would be able to pick up a much better deal on AMC. AMC is in real in a real uh, difficult uh, situation right now. So. Uh, but I do see that, you know, Amazon definitely is trying to move into the physical, um, the physical retail space, you know, with their acquisition of Whole Foods. And, uh, you know, so it, it would make sense. Um, it would make sense. Ah, is it going to be a market crash? Well, <laughs> who knows? I don't think it will be. And, and you know, and, I, and I've really kind of changed my thinking on this. I believe that the Federal Reserve has basically signaled that they're willing to do whatever it takes in terms of liquidity to make sure that asset values do not decline too much. Now, what the Federal Reserve is afraid of is not inflation, it's deflation. And this is the reason why uh, when this whole thing started with this COVID-19 thing, when we had to do when the lockdown happened, that's why they flooded the market with liquidity, basically saying that they would buy all debt even include even up to including uh, some of the high yield debt, which is basically what they call junk bonds in the industry. So, um, anyways, let's see. I have a question here. How does one protect themselves from sharp market entrance? Very easy. <laughs> and this is what a lot of people just don't seem to want to do, and I just I, I I tell this to them all the time, and it's very very important in any position that you have. 
always put a seven to eight percent stop loss on it. And that way, uh, even if you get called out, and yes, it can, you know, I get called out all the time, you'll protect your capital. The whole deal in this game is, you know, to make sure that you, you maintain your capital base so that when opportunities happen, and they happen all the time, you can uh, take advantage of them. But the only way you can do that is not to uh, is, is not to denigrate your um, your capital. And the way you do that is if you buy a stock, say for hundred dollars, you want to set that stop loss good till cancel at ninety three or so, ninety three, ninety two. That's going to give you the best return. The reason for that is because beyond about eight percent loss, it becomes increasingly difficult to come back to even. So. Uh, this is how you protect yourself from a market a market loss. Now, every day on this show, I try to show the direction of the market. Currently, we're in a confirmed uptrend. This is a this is a time to be invested in the market. Now, there's a, there's two other states modes that the market can be in. One is that it's it's basically choppy, uh, and that would be a, sort of a yellow arrow. And the one that you have to be really careful about is a confirmed downtrend. And we did have a confirmed downtrend starting uh, basically in late February. And I uh, I don't know if people were watching me back then. But at that time, I recommended everyone go to all cash and then short the market. That's exactly what I did. And it worked out quite well for me. So um, that's that's what I recommend. Um, took out my principal fast. Great. This is the thing. Always remember, you're going to have essentially a trading stack. And, and, and part of being successful as a trader is money management. And uh, But the way I do it is that I have different accounts. I have one account that I trade and I use margin with, and I have another that I, that I basically trade um, relatively uh, stable ETFs on uh, with very little margin. And then I also have a cash account. So I typically will try to to balance them depending on what the market situation is. But the most important thing is, I believe, is to um, preserve your capital in a downturn and, of course, then maximize your increase when the uh, times are right. So that's very, very important. And that's why I recommend everybody stop loss 7 to 8%, um, good till canceled. So on everything you basically have at any time. All right, so uh, let's see. Thoughts on ZI, Zoom Info. Zoom Info is an interesting one. I, you know, I was confirmed. You know, the other day, I was, um, I, I was, <laughs> I, I was confusing it with Zoom ZM, which is of course done fantastic, and everyone's been on probably a Zoom call and that kind of thing. So, um, this one is a little bit spiky because it's. Uh, you know, it's a it's a business to business. Um, you know, it's a business to business. Now, here's the interesting thing about and this is something, and I I want to I kind of caution you on with this stock. This just just came out literally, uh, as you can see. It just it just started. It is definitely in the top four percent of all stocks. But the problem with Chinese stocks is that they tend Unfortunately, they do not adhere to generally accepted accounting principles. I put out a TikTok video on this, and this was a this was a compromise that was made in order for the Chinese stocks to be able to be listed on the Western New York Stock Exchanges. They did not require them to use generally accepted accounting principles. This is a real problem because they don't really have comparable results. So, unless you're very knowledgeable about a stock like this, I would avoid it just on the fact that. It doesn't have good. Um, uh, it just doesn't have good good fundamentals in terms of the financials because they aren't reported correctly because it is a Chinese stock. Now I know that sounds very. Um, it, it sounds like I'm very dismissive of this, but uh, I I point you to Luck and Coffee, LK, which not only falsified the number of openings but their revenues as well. And this is the problem with the Chinese stocks. So I think you really proceed with caution. Now, you can make money in Chinese stocks, so I'm not totally against them, but it's much more of a lottery ticket than an investment. So it's anything that is typically Chinese in nature is going to be much higher, more speculative than the other ones. So again, part of the way, the best way to own the Chinese market, I don't believe is to own individual Chinese issues 
directly, I think it's better to go through um, ETFs like Ying YANG or Yang YANG. So there are there are ETFs out there that own broad baskets of Chinese stocks. The biggest problem with Chinese stocks, of course, is their comparability to other stocks because of the gap reporting, and that's that's that is a major problem with with those stocks. So just I want to be very very. Um, I think you should be very careful with them. All right, thoughts on, uh, let's see, uh, thoughts on Blink, changing, hmm, I don't know about Blink. How much of your portfolio should be in cash? Well, it just depends on the market condition. And this has to do with, is the market in a confirmed uptrend? Is it in a confirmed downtrend? Or is it you know basically moving sideways? Currently, it is in a confirmed uptrend. Um, there, you should try at this point, believe it or not, to be nearly as fully invested as possible. I know that sounds weird. That said, when you invest, invest, try to invest in the better issues and also the try to use stop losses. Now, if you can't find, if you don't have enough capital to buy, you know, one of the FANG stocks or something like that, a good way to go is with the indexes like the QQQ. I want to show you that because the QQQ is one of the all-time winningest um, of all the ETFs. And if you're looking for a, an investment and you don't have the absolute perfect one and you, you want to stay invested, I would recommend investing in something like the Qs while you're waiting to invest in something that is better. So right today, as you can see with this, and I'm going to show you the, the, the chart on this one, uh, this is the QQQ. It's up 97 cents, which is not a lot, but it's up. Um, you know, it is, oh, it, we just closed and it's up after hours. So we're going to see some movement into the market. It's up about 0.87%. This is a very, very good ETF to use if you want to be in the market, but you're not sure exactly where to put your money at any one time. Once you see a good opportunity, you know, I'd recommend selling a little bit of the queues and then going into that. That's just sort of what I do with several of my accounts. Um, I, I typically like to be fully invested when we're in a confirmed uptrend as we are now. And the way I do that is I will have a broad ETF like the QQQs that I will use to put my, essentially my ready capital. And then when I find an opportunity, I will sell enough Qs to buy uh, more of the, um, more of what I'm buying for. And also, this also helps if you have a margin account because the QQQ is a highly marginable security. It's marginal, I think, about 75, 60 to 75 percent, depending on your broker. So it's very liquid and it tends to move. It, it's exactly the same makeup as the NASDAQ 100. So it's got all the good stuff in it, like Microsoft and those stocks as, as well. Um, but it does, obviously it doesn't move. It, individual opportunities, you should try to select those. But when you're waiting for an opportunity to happen, the queues is a good place to put your, your capital while you wait uh, to, to be in a particular stock. So let's see if I can find some. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So, hey, Arnold, good to see you. AXP, your thoughts? Let's see if I can give you something on AXP. Um, on, let me just see if I can, I can give you the thoughts on that AXP. Let's see. Oh, American Express, very good company. Um, okay. All right, now here's the thing about AXP, and thank you very much. This is, um, uh, uh, you know, everybody has heard of American Express. Of course, it's one of the top financials. Here's the thing about American Express that I want to kind of, kind of t uh, talk to you about. American Express is a great company, and I in no way don't like it. But there's a better opportunity, and that opportunity is in PayPal. And the reason I say that is because PayPal. Is, um, is 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 much higher rated than American Express. Why? Because people are moving to the PayPal internet-based banking system, and PayPal really is leading it. I've had a PayPal account for over 20 years, um, and just about anyone can get a PayPal account. There's many people that don't have access to banks or they're too expensive, but they can have a PayPal account, and this is why they're picking up just so much of the business. And I just think, I really do think this is a classically good stock for the long term. Uh, it has a composite writing of 97 and it's number one in the group. And this is the finance group. 
So instead of buying the banks, buy PayPal, P-Y-P-L, pay, PayPal. Just thank you very much, Arnold. So appreciate everything you said on that. Yeah, because, you know, thank, thank, you, for, thank you for bringing this up. I'm trying to, um, and I think, it's, I think it, it produces a really good opportunity for everyone, um, PayPal. All right, so let's see. Okay, QQQ. All right, I was talking about the Qs. Now, the QQQ is not a speculative investment like so many. Some of the other ones that I that I show on the show are fairly speculative, but the QQQ I don't believe is very speculative. It's an index. Now, are you going to make as much money in the QQQs as you're going to make in a biotech stock that's being heavily accumulated by funds? No, you're not. But it is a good place. To, to park your capital while you find the true opportunities. So remember, let the game come to you. It's kind of like don't don't chase don't don't chase um, stocks. Let the game come to you. And while you're waiting for the game to come to you, the queues are a good place. Now, the queues are a great place to to stash your cash while you're getting ready to make another kind of another investment. That's because in with with these broad index-based ETFs, as long as the market is a confirmed uptrend, they're worth holding. When the market changes direction, and I typically will uh, show a slide every uh, every time the market changes a direction, and this is, you know, you want to hold, uh, you want to hold the broad ETFs, the, 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 the ETFs, when the market is in a confirmed uptrend. And I'm going to just show you really quickly, by the way, this is, um, so you can so, so you can see it on uh, this is on uh, TikTok uh, for people on TikTok. Um, I am simulcasting everything on um, on YouTube and on Periscope. The YouTube address being www.youtube.com slash Dallas Trading 4 and on Periscope pscp.tv plus Dallas Trading 4. Now, as you can see, the market trend is up. Market is a confirmed uptrend. What this means is that if you do have a broad ETF like QQQ or the um, the the, uh, the spider, the SPY, or you know, the, or the VOO, which is the same as the spider, except it's from Vanguard as opposed to State Straight Bank. Those are you want to hold those when it's in a confirmed market uptrend as it is now. Now, if this market changes, this market direction changes. You then want to go to 50%, and then if the market is in a confirmed downtrend, you want to go to 0%. You want to sell your position and wait for the market to change. And then when the market moves into a downtrend, there are there are specific vehicles that you can use to take advantage of them, such as the SQQQ. But right now, it is a confirmed uptrend, so if you're, if you, you're spare capital, you probably want to park it in the SQQQ and the or the uh, a spider. Now, here's the thing about these two vehicles. They're highly liquid, and they also trade 24 hours a day. So you can always get your money out of them. So that's why they're a good place to park your capital, um, as long as the market is in a confirmed uptrend. So uh, that's kind of kind of my thing on, the, on those ETFs. All right, so let's see. Um, oh, well, got that, wait a minute. <laughs> Okay. Uh, any opinion on pin, on Pinterest? Pinterest, interesting. Um, you know, I haven't been in I haven't been in Pinterest, but let me see if I can give you some idea on Pinterest. Um, you know, I do like the social media space, and and I have done personally very well with um, you know with with certain of the uh, of the social media stocks, especially Facebook. But let me just look at pens. Pens, yeah. A quote. Let me get a quote on it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's up today, so it's nice. Um, it seems like it's bouncing off the forty-day moving average. Let me see if I can pull that up for everybody that is watching on on uh, YouTube and on um, uh, and and on Periscope. Um, it's outperforming. It's a, It's as you can see, the relative strength is good, seventy-eight. Uh, here's the thing. It's probably going to move down, I believe, to the 40-day moving average. So I don't believe this has a lot more power. Well, it, it seems like it's bouncing a little bit. 
you know, I see this uh, in the short term, you know, possibly going, you know, over 23. Now, here's the thing. If this stock were to, is, is to exceed about $23, I wouldn't be a buyer in this until it was in, I, I wouldn't be a buyer in the stock until it was about um, 23. Now, that sounds kind of weird to you, but uh, the way this works is you typically want to buy a stock on its uptick. <laughs> you don't want to buy it on when it's going down. I know that sounds kind of, kind of, um, kind of obvious, but believe me, people hunting bargains will buy stocks on the downtrend. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times when you buy on the downtrend, it just keeps on going down. So um, you don't, you want to buy an uptick. So pri before you buy anything, look to see how the market is trading and see if there's an uptick. That's when you want to buy. You want to buy on the uptick and never on the downtick if you can avoid it. Um, so that's just that's just something uh, that that I that I want to put out there. Here's the thing about Pinterest. Um, it's you know twenty one dollars. It's it's a it's a great deal, uh, but it is not number one in the category. And of course, the the number one stock in the category is Facebook. And for um, you know for full disclosure, I have owned Facebook numerous times. I have always done well with this stock, and um, uh, I think that you know there's a tremendous opportunity. It there, it's moving very nicely today. So if you have the money, and I don't know you know depending on the size of your account. I don't know how many shares of Facebook you can buy, but I do think it's an absolute quality stock. Uh, you know, typically I go in with a little bit more than some of the people probably uh, listening to this are going to go in with, but I still think it's really, really powerful. It's got a composite rating of 99. It's number one in its group, and it's in one of the best sectors. So at 231.99, it sounds like it's overpriced. I don't think so. Uh, I think Facebook is, is a good one. So in terms of Pinterest and Facebook, I have to I have to err on the side of Facebook. But the problem is Facebook is ten times more expensive, so you know it may it may be, it may not fit it into your um, in, in, into your buying plans. But I think Pinterest is good. I would look also in, in this space though. Instead of looking at Pinterest in the same price range, I would look at Dropbox, um, DBX um, as a potential alternative. Because I do believe that Dropbox has a very, very good model, and it's a more quality stock than Pinterest is. Uh, it's currently trading up forty-six cents at twenty-one forty-nine. This is a, it's closed. It's moving up in the after hours. Again, it's moving up for this forty-day moving average for everybody that's looking on uh, YouTube and Periscope. So, um, if you're looking, possibly at making an investment in Pinterest, I would, I would definitely. Uh, look as an alternative to go into DBX. I think it's a power, powerful stock, and I think it's got more upside. So, just my opinion. Uh, but that's that's where I would be. I'm not in either of the stock, but I've recommended Dropbox several times, and I do think it's a quality stock. Um, okay, EVFM. Let me look at EVFM really quick for everybody. Um, EVFM, and that is. Okay, it's a bioscience. Okay, I wasn't familiar with this one. Yeah, okay, I know the group that this is in. Yeah, this is collapsing. I don't think you want to be in this chart. Let me just uh, let me just go to a bigger size here and show everybody on YouTube and on um, and and on uh, Periscope. Uh, this is not a chart you want to buy. Uh, it's just unfortunately, it's just one of those things. It's got a relative strength rating of two. This is horrible. Uh, only the oil stocks, I think, are worse than this. Um, you know, I just, even though it's up today, I just don't buy it. it this is, you know, don't don't get this one. Uh, you know, this is, you know, the one you want is Biomarin in, in this space, and that's B R B M R N. Um, but I just wouldn't be a buyer of this one. I'm sorry, I can't recommend it. It's just not. It's got a weak chart. All right, so, um, all right, okay. Thoughts on Warner Music Group? Hmm, Warner Music Group, wow. I didn't even realize that that was a stock. I guess that was split off from, uh, I guess it was split off from, that's interesting, Warner Music Group from, from Time Warner. Um, you know, I, if this was, if this was, 
you know, 30 years ago, I would, I would be, you know, going, this is great, but I, I don't know. I just, I just can't, I mean, I do, I know they have a great, I, I know they have a great book, by the way, I, I for, for, um, sake of full disclosure, I did work for, uh, Deloitte and, um, Time Warner was one of my clients. Um, here's the thing about this uh, particular, it's, it looks like a new issue. I just don't like the space. You know, recorded music, it's heyday. It's really, a, this is a baby boomer thing, man. We're, you're buying the past if you're buying this stock, Warner Music Group. Um, you know, the, the future is not in this space. The future is with Spotify and with um, Siri, actually, might not be a good one. I would recommend Siri over this because they actually, they just bought, um, they just bought um, um, Pandora, which I do think is a tremendous uh, franchise. Uh, this is one I think that you, you know, if you want a cheap stock that you can make money on, um, this one, you might want to look at this one. Now, I, you know, this is a little bit more of a lottery ticket than I normally like to go. It's S-I-R-I. -I. Siri is the is, is the symbol. It's up 17.17%. Uh, Not a lot. It's basically trading about six dollars a share. Um, in terms of the cheap stocks, this is possibly one you want to look at, but be very careful because you can get burned on this. It's got a pretty good relative strength at forty-six. It's seventy-five composite rating, which isn't bad. Uh, it isn't a growth market. I think it's better than Warner Music Group. Just my opinion. It's cheaper, and it has more subscribers. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. Warner Music Group. Not to not to rain on anybody's parade, but I think you ought to look at Siri if you're looking in that area. So um, let's see. Da, da, da. Um, Everfin thoughts on CTHR. Okay, so let's look at CTHR just really really quick. Uh, if I can get it up, CTHR. And okay. Interesting. Okay. This is a penny stock. Yeah, this is a penny. Oh, Jim Stones. No, mm -mm. no, no, this is not, this is not enough capitalization. Um, this is, you know, this is a, tr this is a classic penny stock. It's 0.78 cents. It's less than a dollar. Here's, here's what I, you know, try, try to, try to be careful about buying stocks below $10. A share because they typically are highly manipulated. It doesn't. It has a very small volume, 106. It's not enough. You need a million, uh, a million shares a day to change hands, in order for it to not be kind of in that manipulative uh, category. Stocks like this are manipulated. It's got a composite rating of two. That's. It doesn't get much worse than that, folks. It's one is the worst. Uh, this is just absolutely a no go. This is this is basically, yeah. This is a penny stock that. And let's look at their their their, third, their their growth rate zero growth rate, sales are down. No way. This just if you want to throw your money away, this is a good place to do it. Uh, I wouldn't be in it. I just wouldn't be in it. It's just not worth your. It's just not worth uh, risking capital like that. All right. Um, let's see. I have a question from YouTube. Hey, thanks for like for for. Uh, hopefully, you'll like me on. YouTube, like me and all that stuff. Um, you know, you know, you probably know what everyone says. I don't have my little thing up there. I should get up there. Uh, what do you think about IBM's price? Passive income investor here. Okay, here's the thing about IBM. IBM was uh, the top company for many years. As a matter of fact, back in the day when IBM was 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 king, Microsoft was a little tiny baby company. You know what? Don't buy it. It's yesterday's news. IBM. IBM, unfortunately, and, and this is painful for me to say this because when I was going to college and when I was, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, IBM, man, that's everybody wanted to work for IBM. That's what that's where you wanted to be. You know, this is a GM that's going to happen. This is a slow motion train wreck that's happening right now. Take your money, don't put it in IBM, put it in Microsoft. I have my money in Microsoft. I don't have any shares of IBM. Why? Not because I dislike Microsoft, but every dog has its day. And this dog, unfortunately, was a great dog 30 years ago. You're buying the past if you're buying IBM. I'm sorry to say that. I really, it's painful to say that, but it is not a good, not a good passive investment. Uh, I do not believe that they're going to be able to maintain their dividends. They have serious issues, and they do have issues 
with, I believe, debt. So let me look at their debt ratio. This is another thing we're coming. It's market cap is one oh seven billion. Okay, uh, on this, let's let's just for fun look at Microsoft's capitalization. All right, Microsoft, of which I do own, uh, its market capitalization currently is ten times what IBM's capitalization is. Who do you think can pay their bonds better? I think it's Microsoft and not IBM. I think that's the answer. Microsoft's pre-tax margin is 34.7%. IBM, on the other hand, their pre-tax margin is only 16.2%. Now, why do I say this? If you're an income investor, you have to look at what their pre-tax margins are and what their, what their revenues are. Microsoft, 10 times the revenue, twice the margin. Do you think they can pay the, the do you think they can pay the dividend? And by the way, these are both dividend stocks. I think that Microsoft is your better answer. Buy fewer stocks in Microsoft, you're going to be a lot happier than buying a lot of stock, buying a lot of shares of IBM. It's just unfortunate, but true. Uh, the good is, you know, what about Air Canada? Oh, I wish I I wish I would I wish I liked airline stocks more. I I just I don't I don't see it. I I think Air Canada I, I think Air Canada is like all the other airline stocks. I I just don't believe um you know that that Air that Air Canada uh is is a good buy, but I'm going to bring up the the the, the chart here. Yeah, where can I get that? How can I get the chart? Run. Okay. Canada. Sorry, it's taking me long. I don't know the I don't know the stock the symbol right away on Air Canada, but it is. Oh, can I see it? Okay, it's currently yeah, it's down thirteen sixty four. I just wouldn't buy this. I know it's I know it's up a little bit after hours, but. I'm just I can't I just can't get behind any of these airline stocks. I just I can't. Um, I, I it's an it's an important company. I don't think they're going out of business, but I just I think they have a lot of debt, and I, I just I, I don't see it right now with this COVID nineteen thing. I just don't see airline passenger miles going up, but, and business travel is down. So I I don't see how it, it's going to be as good. Uh, you know, it, it's good as you know, it's good as the other ones. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, by the way, this is Discipline Trader. What's up to you, man? All right. Uh, let's see. Do I have, let's see what else do I have here that I can show you. Okay. Any thoughts on ARYA? So let me look at ARYA just real quick here. Just look at the chart on that. Um, ARYA. Quote on that really quick. Yeah, it's down a little bit. It's um, Airway Sciences. Um, it's a blank check company. Okay, here's the thing about these blank check companies. Um, yeah, the thing the thing about these blank check companies that I kind of don't like is that I never know what they're investing in until they invest in it. Now, sometimes it can be really good. I mean, this 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 very this uh, investment in Nikola turned out really well for. Um, I think it's a uh, VTIQ. I think it is. It turned out very well for them. But this is a blind pool, and you know, blind pool investing. You know, I just, I, I don't know, until I know what they're acquiring, I just can't get excited about them. I, it's sort of like an IPO. I don't like to buy IPOs mainly because you just don't know how they're gonna, they come out of the box. I want to see some seasoning, a little bit here, and it's, it's been all over the place. It was up tremendously in the beginning of June. It looks like it's backed off a little bit. It's still trading. It, you know, I just don't know. I, I can't really give you a good, a, a good, um, a good idea on this one. I just wouldn't be in it until I knew what they're investing in. It's just one of those things. I like to see, um, you know, what they're investing in before I buy them. That's me. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, are you using StreamYard? Yes, I am actually. I, I am using StreamYard right now. And uh, currently, I am trying to broadcast 
I got knocked off of two of my platforms, but I'm broadcasting to Facebook, YouTube, um, gosh, and I guess the other ones. I guess you can tell kind of because what I did is I changed this around a little bit. It says Dallas Trading for a Live. Well, that's basically I, I used the template that StreamYard had. But I do like StreamYard a lot, so it's kind of cool. That's what I'm using right now. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm going <laughs> going along. G P O R. Hmm, okay, let me look at G P O R. I mean, I have to. I don't know G P R O R. Oh, G P O R. All right. You know, instead of doing that one, I know that I I know this is a lottery ticket, man. I'm sorry. I I just I I yeah. You you can definitely double your money on this one, but wow. I just wouldn't be in this one. I would instead, instead of that one, just a, just a suggestion, not, you know, just a suggestion. I There's a biotech that I just I just love, and I, it's being acquired by all the funds. It's not as expensive stock. Z-Y-X-I. Now, I, it's $20 a share. Uh, you know, I know you can't buy as many shares, but it's up $2.33 today, 10.5% in one day, all right? This company, this is a real company, and it is being uh, developed, it's being acquired by many, many funds. It's got a composite rating of 99. Just check this one out, Z-Y-X-I, okay? Just just check it out, and I hope that, you know, um, I I hope, uh, you, you know, just, just, check, just check Z-Y-X-I on. Um, Anyways, so that's um, on that. So let's see. Let's take a look at TikTok again about Air Canada. I just couldn't get it behind Air Canada. I'm sorry about that. Just can't do it. Do you trade for a living? You know what? I actually do. <laughs> I actually do. I have other investments too. I have real estate and, uh, you know, I have interest in, you know, some other businesses. But, yeah, I do. I actually do. Um, I About... Three years ago, uh, I was doing a contract. Well, actually, uh, I was doing a contract at Sunoco. Um, you know, I was a contractor there. I was doing some, you know, some work on their, you know, revenue recognition side. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I was looking at my time and I was like, wow, you know, I can make as much money trading as I can working for other people. I don't dislike working for other people. I love working on contracts, especially when it's in kind of the finance technical area. That's sort of my specialty. But, yeah, I do. And uh, it's worked out well for me. You know, you can... It's amazing. The the if you learn how to trade the stock market, it is a totally transferable skill. You know, how did you do all of your MBA? And I have an MBA. Um, you know, like a lot of people, but you know, why not learn how to trade? I mean, it doesn't take that long. Read two or three books. Um, the the O'Neill book is absolutely the best. And then just you know start out with a little bit of money, and uh, it's a it's one of the greatest wealth creation things that you could possibly do. Um, you know, at any time. So um, that said, if you want to get my trade alerts, and I have trade alerts, basically, I'm going to put this up on the. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to put this up on the screen. Um, you know, my trade alerts are basically at DallasTradingFloor.com, and uh, just go there and sign up. and And I send out trade alerts. I sent out one on Monday. Uh, you know, to the on fr on Sunday night because we're going to going to see a little weakness in the market. We did. Um, I try to get behind, you know, and I try to show you what trades I'm making, um, you know, before I make them. And sometimes I make them, sometimes I'll, I'll make the trade. If, if the conditions are right the day of the trade, typically I'll either make it or sometimes I won't make it just depending. Uh, I would, I, it's, I have certain rules. I don't only buy an uptrend. I only buy an upticks. And, you know, if the market is trending down, I usually don't, I, I usually don't buy, but, um, you know, unless I'm shorting, of course. Um, but it's a trade. It, it's a it's a it's an alert list, and I and um, you know a lot of people seem to seem to be making money off of it. So it's totally free. Um, I just do this because um, I want to you know pass along some of the trades I'm making. I was very very fortunate about 20 years ago to be employed uh, uh, by a man who basically showed me how to trade uh, options and the cues, which you know changed my life. So hopefully maybe I can give back a little bit to everybody. But it's a great skill to have. And uh, highly recommend it. You know, it's not just for, you know, it's not just for Wall Street, man. It's for everybody. Learning how to trade is one of your best skills out there. 
it, it's up there, you know, it's, it's up there with learning to read and write, in my opinion. So it is something you can always do. Anyways, I want to say, um, uh, you know, just shout out to everyone here. If you want to get on the list, uh, www.dallastradingfloor.com. Now, I've been um, talking <laughs> over an hour, so I gotta, I'm, I'm going to be signing off for today. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, send me any comments that you like, any you know things you want me to research, and sometimes I put them up on the show. So that's DallasTrainingFloor.com. And bye for everyone on uh, TikTok for right now, and I will see you tomorrow at 2.30. And for everybody uh, that's watching on YouTube and Periscope and Facebook, thanks for dropping by and taking a look. Uh, hopefully I'll be on... Um, uh, LinkedIn here pretty quickly. I'm still in the approval process, but hopefully I'll get on there as well. And maybe if all things go right, I will have a YouTube channel where I can uh, you can take a look at some of my past videos. Now, here's the thing. I do have uh, most of these uh, uh, lives are, are archived on Periscope, PSCP TV uh, slash Dallas Trading for. And till tomorrow, I hope to see you and uh, happy trading for everybody out there, and I will see you tomorrow.